A key part of the variation method is the calculation of energy and the variation of parameters in order to minimize that energy. And you might ask, well, why, uh, how do you know that the minimum energy is the, uh, and the collection of parameters that give that minimum energy, how do you know that's the best thing uh, you can do? Well, that has to do with the variation theorem, variation theorem. That means that the energy calculated with a trial wave function using the variation method will always be greater than the true energy. Okay, that's important. Why is that? Well, let's look at uh, energy. So this is the energy we calculate um, from the Schrodinger equation using our trial wave function. And we picked our trial wave function so that we can solve the Schrodinger equation equation easily and this is say parameters. Uh, let's be a little more specific. Uh, sometimes a trial wave function are expressed as a linear combination of basis set wave functions. So actually let's do that here. So our trial wave function will be a linear combination say i equal 1 to n, it will be a finite combination of a coefficient times a basis set here. And then you use this trial wave function, which you've chosen these functions wisely, so that you can solve the Schrodinger equation, h psi equal e psi. And this is the energy you calculate from this trial wave function, which has a certain set of parameters. So these are the parameters here. And here these are a basis set and the basis set is uh, something you've chosen so that you can solve the Schrodinger equation easily. So let's look at the energy you calculate by this process as a function of the various parameters. So you might uh, calculate uh, some value of energy this way and then you vary those parameters. In this particular case it will be the coefficients of the linear expansion and then what you find is the energy goes down and then after a while you vary the parameters some more and the energy starts going up. So there is a combination of parameters here that will give you a minimum energy. There it is. That's the energy minimum from your trial wave function. The variation theorem says that that energy will always be greater than the true energy. This is the energy you would get if you could, but you can't, but if you could solve the um, the Schrodinger equation exactly. So this is a true energy. All right. And the supposition is that the lower the energy, the better the trial wave function. And you do that by varying the parameters uh, to find the lowest energy. That will always be greater than that. So if you then try uh, a new set of parameters, a new basis set, or some new trial wave function, and you get something that's uh, closer to the energy, that's a better uh, trial wave function, better energy, but you will never ever at this, with this particular method go below the true energy. So you get closer and closer and closer to the true energy and that's why the um, variation theorem is important because you will never go below it. You always approach the true energy with better and better trial wave functions. Okay, so let's try to uh, prove the variation theorem. Again, what is the variation theorem? The energy calculated with a trial wave function will always be greater than the true energy. And the true energy here we mean uh, lowest true energy. All right, so let's take a look at that, see if we can prove this variation theorem. First, what we do is we say um, we have, well, let's define some things. We have h psi equal e psi, all right, and so this is uh, the exact uh, Schrodinger equation. And uh, psi's are the exact wave functions, and e is the exact energy. All right, so that's what that is. Now let's um, expand uh, so we can always say that the wave function will be a linear combination of a basis set. Uh, this basis set ci times uh, psi i where uh, psi i are uh, the basis set for uh, exact 
solution. All right, so that's what uh, we're assuming here. For example, for uh, we had wave functions for particle in a box that depended upon uh, different quantum numbers. If we use all those, each one of those uh, solutions of the Schrodinger equation was an eigenfunction, and the collection of them is called a basis set. And any state of a system, any state of, say, of a particle in a box can be expressed as a linear combination of those basis set functions. Now what we want to do is to look at the trial wave function h phi equal e phi okay and where now this is the inexact uh, Schrodinger equation where these now are approximate well actually what they people do is they call them uh, trial wave functions so these are all trial uh, wave functions and energy. All right, so what we want to do is to prove that any energy you calculated here will be lower than the energy you calculate up here. To do this, let's expand the trial wave function as a linear combination of the uh, wave functions, the basis set wave functions for the exact Schrodinger equation and then put that into uh, this equation here. So that's what we're going to do. We're doing this because, as we'll see eventually, we're able to prove the variation theorem. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. Um, the expectation value for the trial energy will just be equal to the integral. I'll use this for the uh, integral symbol, phi h phi. Uh, where um, here we're going to assume that phi is normalized. So let's go ahead and uh, do this integral. Um, why don't we actually replace that notation with the uh, integral sign that might be a little clearer. So let's integrate uh, phi. Remember on the left there that means take complex conjugate h phi and we're going to integrate this over all space d tau. All right, now we've expanded the trial wave function in terms of a linear combination of the eigenfunctions of H, the exact solution. So let's go ahead and put that linear combination in here. So this is the integral, I'm going to substitute there. It will be the sum over I of C sub I, Psi sub I, the whole thing, complex conjugate, because C and Psi can be complex. H operating on that wave function which we, which we expanded in the eigenfunctions of the exact solution. Let me use a symbol J here so we don't get mixed up. CJ uh, Psi J integrated over all space d tau. All right, well, um, let's uh, continue on. Let's boldly go where no person has gone before except a million other people. This will be, um, what we can do is take the complex conjugate and take it inside the parentheses here. So actually, let's do this. So this would just be the complex conjugate of that coefficient times the complex conjugate of the wave function. Okay, so we put that inside. Now, let's put h inside here. Uh, so this would be the sum over j. Uh, c sub j is a constant. You can pull that outside h. So this would be c sub j h psi sub j again integrated over some space d tau. All right, these are uh, psi j, these, these values are eigenfunctions of h. That was what our assumption was. That's why we expanded our trial wave function in terms of eigenfunctions of the exact Hamiltonian. So h psi equal e psi. Yes, exactly. So this is the integral. I'll just rewrite this term here, sum over I of C sub I star psi sub I star times the sum over J of C sub J H psi equal E psi the jth eigenvalue or the jth energy corresponding to that wave function J. All right, so how clever of us to <laughs> use those eigenfunctions of H so we can get something like this. And uh, let's see, so E sub J and C sub J can come out of the uh, out of the um, these are constants. Uh, let's and let's factor out psi i. 
So uh, this will have a double sum here, sum over i, sum over j of c sub i star c sub j, uh, e sub j, times the integral, again this is a sum over everything here, <laughs> times the integral of uh, psi star i psi j d tau. Okay, there it is. Now we recognize uh, that these are eigenfunctions of the uh, exact Hamiltonian and let's make them uh, proper eigenfunctions so they're orthogonal and normal or normalized. What does that mean? Well, if that's the case then this integral over all space is zero unless i equal j. Okay, so that integral is zero. If i is equal to j then you have just the square of the wave function and that's equal to one. So this is only equal to one when i equal j and otherwise it's equal to zero. So only when i equal j uh, will this sum uh, be equal, not equal to zero. Okay, so with that we can say that that integral is equal to the sum over i of c sub i, only those diagonal terms, c sub j, e sub j. And remember this was the trial, the trial energy that we got from the trial wave function. So we said e trial was this integral. We just evaluated that integral and there it is and its expectation value in case we don't are not in an eigenstate. Okay, so what does this mean? Hmm. Well this is equal to, let's write out a couple of the terms, C1 star C1 E1 plus C2 star C2 E2 plus and so on. What we want to show is that this trial energy will always be greater than or equal to the energy, the ground state energy. Okay, well to do that we recognize that uh, C1 star C1 is greater than or equal to zero. C2 star C2 is greater than or equal to zero. In other words, these are all positive quantities even though one C1 might be negative, C2 might be negative, when you square them they're all positive quantities. So if that's the case then this trial uh, has to be uh, the sum of E1 plus E2 and so on. All right, let's do a few more things here. Let's uh, show that the um, sum of these coefficients is equal to one if these um, are, if the trial wave or the wave functions, the eigenfunctions are normalized and orthogonal. So let's look at this uh, psi, well, let's do this, this um, notation, psi star psi, that's equal to over all space d tau, that's equal to the sum over i of c sub i, psi sub i, and we'll put the stars there, times the sum over j of c sub j, psi sub j. And by arguments that we used before, we can just say that's this is equal to c1, oh well, let me just write it this way. This is equal to the sum over i because when you multiply this out you only get a non-zero value when i equal j because psi i and psi j form uh, an orthal normal basis set. So this is uh, c sub i, uh, c sub i star c sub i. And if this is normalized, so let's assume first this is normalized, this is equal to 1. So the sum of all these coefficients have to be one and each coefficient has to be greater than zero. What does that mean? Well the best case, let me just uh, write this down here, so E trial, that was equal to the first couple terms was C1 star C1 E1 plus C1 star uh, C2 star C2 E2 plus and so on.
zero. So the best case is for us is a C1 star uh, C1 is equal to 1 and C2 star C2 is equal to 0 and so on. In that case E trial will just be equal to the lowest energy state E1. So let's take uh, the case where uh, this is not equal to 1. In fact it has to be less than 1. So the next best case or let's call this uh, not, just not best case. In this case C1 star C1 is less than 1. C1 star C1 is less than 1. But of course it still has to be greater than 0 because the square of that. And this means that we have C2 star C2 for example may not be equal to maybe greater than 0 or uh, C3 star C3 is greater than 0 or so on. But the key point here is that this quantity is less than 1. So what does this mean? Well this means that the trial wave function will be uh, greater because this number is less than 1. The trial wave number will be some fraction of E1. So if we come, this means that uh, E trial will be greater than the ground state energy that you would get if you solve the Schrodinger equation exactly. So combining these two things we say that the trial wave function that you get using that trial, uh, sorry, the trial energy that you get using the trial wave function is greater than or equal to E1. This means that that trial wave function will always give you a, an energy greater than the true energy, the true ground state energy, and that's why you can make this kind of plot. So no matter what trial wave function you use for this variation method, you always get something that's greater than the true energy. Now a key part of this proof of the variation theorem was that these um, uh, the coefficients here are such that they add up when you multiply all the coefficients and add them up you get 1 which is equivalent to saying that our trial wave function here, where is the trial wave function? There it is. This is assuming that uh, psi is normalized. If psi is normalized then when you take psi star sorry phi, phi is normalized. When you take phi star phi uh, that's equal to 1. Now what happens if phi is not normalized? Okay, well, let's see what we do here. So here we go, the trial wave function. Let's use this notation here. The trial wave function is there, uh, and that's uh, the integral. So if um, the psi is not normalized, or phi is not normalized, we said that the trial, the expectation value of the energy using those trial wave functions is phi h phi if phi is normalized. If it's not normalized you can normalize this by just dividing by the integral phi uh, phi. So if this is normalized it's equal to 1 which will give you what we had before but if the phi's are not normalized uh, you have to divide by this, which will, is the same thing as dividing by um, a constant that will give you this quantity equal to 1. So this is the m important equation for the variation method. This shows you how to calculate the expectation value as uh, these integrals here, the expectation value using a trial wave function, and then what you do, these uh, wave functions have in them adjustable parameters. You adjust those parameters so that the expectation value you calculate for energy is minimized. And that is uh, then by the variation theorem the best wave function and the best associated energy you can get for that particular trial wave function.